So, we talk about these gauche, anti, and eclipse confirmations. Let's talk about the energy associated with them because this is relevant in terms of alkanes. Alkanes flop around a lot and there is a low barrier for them to move around, but there still is preference for certain confirmations over others. So, let's start with something very easy. Let's work with butane. So, we have Two car we're going along with two center carbons with we have, with our two methyl groups on either end. I'm gonna erase this here so, so I can put the energy diagram across the bottom. So if you look at our energy, specifically the Gibbs energy as we move along, what we'd expect the highest energy one to be is one where we are eclipsed for both the methyl groups. So here's gonna represent basically our highest energy. Now as we rotate this methyl group away, we get to the gauche conformation, it's gonna drop down in energy. And as we move over to a second eclipse of the hydrogen, it's gonna be higher in energy, but it's gonna be less high in energy than if you have this methyl group, methyl groups opposite each other because the hydrogen is smaller. So there's still a steric effect, but it's a smaller steric effect. Now our most stable conformation here is gonna be when our CH3 groups are anti to one another. And the reason for this is that spatially it gets them as far as far as possible. We have the smallest groups next to the smallest groups and the largest groups opposing in. So typically with a hydrocarbon, what we expect to see is kind of this staggered conformation along the line. Typically when we draw alkane chains, that's what we do. We get the little zigzag going across with the carbon chains. What does it look like between the two? Well, there's actually a transition state between these different conformations. Now you may expect this to say, well, this is really high energy. Why would it stay there? You know, why wouldn't this be the highest point in the field? Well, this is kind of where Lewis theory is going to break down. We need to go to molecular orbital theory. So when we have these different conformations, we have a symmetry that does a really good job of ensuring that we get the most out of our bonding. And you would need to draw the molecular orbital diagram to see this. But there is a transition state to begin this rotation. Now, speaking for the eclipse conformations, yeah, it's not that high relative to the eclipse. But we do have a bit of a barrier to go over. Now, between this and this, we're gonna kinda of see the similar thing that there's a barrier to go over it, but it's not near, it's pretty close in energy to the actual energy of the eclipse conformations. And then, let's so go between the two again, we kinda of see this transition state. So we're gonna see transition states even between unfavorable conformations simply because we are breaking the symmetry of the molecule. And as we break the symmetry, for MO theory, this is basically the same thing as breaking bonds. In order to get this rotation, we take a lot of orbitals out of alignment that would generally be used for bonding. So, this energy is small relative to the actual eclipse conformation. So if it's successful enough to get to these eclipse conformations, it's also successful enough to go over these transition states. So, if we were to keep rotating, basically we would go back the other way because of symmetry. So this is what you need to keep in mind when you're looking at these conformations. Definitely your eclipse are higher in energy. They're going to be low, lower eclipse conformations if you don't have both groups next to each other. Most favorable is going to be the staggered conformation as you move along. Nice zigzag pattern if you were to draw it out. But there is a slight barrier to these rotations. So we don't, while we do typically see the most thermodynamically stable conformations, there is a little bit of trapping them with transition states.